I am Pastor David, and I'm glad to, to see everyone. I'm glad to welcome you here to Orange United Methodist Church. Uh, it's a great church, great conference, great nation, great people all around, and, and I'm glad to see you here today. Um, today, our, our scripture lesson, we'll start here with our scripture lesson for today as our Lenten series continues, our Lenten journey. Um, here are the Here's the scripture reading for today. And it comes out of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, starting with verse 16. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for bringing us here together today to, to hear your word proclaimed through scripture, through preaching, through song, and and today through the celebration of Holy Communion. We pray now that you would have your way with us. Let your Holy Spirit own this time, own each one of us. Help us to hear the words that you want us to hear today, to, to receive the message that you have for each of us. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Anybody seen the movie uh, Back to the Future? They're in the back. This is from 1985, but it's one of this way back in the Stone Ages, right? One of my favorite movies in which uh, Michael J. Fox plays Marty McFly, who travels back in time in a time-traveling DeLorean, scientifically souped up by Doc, the mad scientist. I didn't ask Ryan for a picture, but if you happen to be able to Google one, throw one up on the screen. There may be some folks that just don't know about the DeLorean. Unfortunately, on a, upon arrival, the DeLorean time machine feature breaks down. So Marty is stuck in the past, actually stuck in the, the, the town his parents grew up in, and he lands at the, in town when his parents are in high school. Now, unfortunately, uh, since the the time machine has broken down if he, he realizes he's stuck in the past. And so long as he's stuck in the past, he starts to realize his future is being put at risk. And not just his future, but his parents' future and the future of many others. He's stuck in the past, so he's, he's got to get the time machine up and running so he can get back to the future ASAP, right? All right, that's about... If you haven't seen it, you gotta, you got to go back and check it out. Now, most of us, we don't have a time-traveling DeLorean, but all of us do travel back into the past. Right? We, all, we all have memories. Right? We all have regrets. We have longings. Uh, we travel back into the past, and we take our strolls down memory lane. It can be fun, and it and exciting, it can be hard and painful, but it is possible for us to, to kind of travel back into the past that way. And it's also possible that we could get stuck in the past and harm the future that God has prepared for us and, is, and the, the future that's springing up right now if we could just perceive it. And so today we want to talk about uh, being maybe stuck in the past I believe that for each one of us, God wants to do a new thing. There's something new that God would like to accomplish today. And in this, this season of Lent, God has plans for you. For a lot of people, this verse is one of their favorites. It comes from the prophet Jeremiah. It says, plan, God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. And in today's scripture reading, we hear Isaiah come. Expanding on this as he says, 
See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Well, today, I want to uh, consider three ways that we could poss possibly be stuck in the past. And we'll use the situation of the Israelites as kind of our, our place to examine the different ways we can get stuck in the past. So around the year 600 BC, the Israelites were, uh, their, their nation was conquered and the people were exiled by the great superpower Babylon. This happened around 600 BC. And what happened in the exile is the Babylonians basically take over um, the Israelites' uh, country and send many of the, ba the Israelites to Babylon and then bring ship back a lot of Babylonians to Israel. And the purpose of this is to basically weaken the Israelite people. You take all the lawyers, the doctors, the, uh, the, the people who you really depend on and take them out of your country and send them to another place and then switch it all around. It's deeply painful. Right? You can only imagine, right? If, if one of the other superpowers in the world conquered the United States and, and all of us were shipped to their country and, and people from their country came to our country, <coughs> it'd be horrible. I don't know that we can really fully Im sort of imagine or comprehend what this was like. But there are three ways that the Israelites responded in general. There are other ways, but one, uh, there was a focus on the good old days, right? Remembering as you're in exile, picture yourself in, in exile in Babylon, and you're remembering the good days. Oh, I remember when we used to go to the temple, and it was so beautiful and so glorious. Oh, I remember our home in our neighborhood, I remember our farm, I remember the celebrations, I remember keeping the Sabbath, I remember gathering around and telling the stories of our faith, like when God parted the Red Sea and, and so that we could be delivered out of slavery and then washed away our enemies as the, as the river closed back up. Oh, wasn't that this great? And to spend all the time thinking about the good old days, to the extent perhaps that they were not able to perceive the new thing springing forth. They weren't able to uh, perceive the way being cre got created by God in the wilderness because they were so focused on, on looking back at the good times. All right, That's one way. Get stuck in the past thinking about the, the good times, the good old days. The other way they have gotten stuck in the past and thinking about how horrible what happened to them really was. How horrible. Get stuck in the bad times. Think about, I can't believe. I can't believe that this happened to us. I can't believe that Babylon would do this. I can't believe that our leaders failed us and couldn't protect us. I can't believe how bad this hurt. I can't believe how mad I am. I'll never get over this. I am so... You can fill in the blank, right? <laughs> so that was another possibility. It's so stuck in the, the negativity and the, the, the hardness and, and how bad what happened really was that I can't, I can't perceive the new thing that springs forth, right? I can't let it go. Like we heard the word of God said, let go of the former things. Let go of the past so that we can perceive the new thing. Now there's another category. I'll say that those who got stuck in the, it was okay, the okay pass. I call it the okay corral. It said, basically, they're saying, this group is saying, eventually, okay, the exile starts 600 B.C., around 540 B.C. Uh, the exile is over, and, and the Israelites they have a chance to go home. But some of them decide, well, I think it's okay here in Babylon. It's okay here. Yes, what happens terrible, but it's okay now. Um, yes, I miss my home, but I'm okay here. Yes, I miss the temple, but I'm okay worshiping here. It's okay. Everything's okay. I'm just, you know, yeah, it'd be better to be back home, but I, 
Who knows what that journey would be like? Who knows how hard it would be to get back home? Who knows what's there? I'm okay with this because I don't really know what that might be. So I'm okay. So they're stuck in the past. Of, it, this is okay. What we've been doing here for the last 60 years, it's, it's okay. So let's just stick with this. All right. So you got that. You see the different ways you get stuck in the past. You'd be stuck because it was so bad, stuck because it was so good, or stuck because it was just okay. And it seems like there's a commercial now. So somebody, like, just okay is not okay, right? Now the same thing can happen to each one of us. Whatever your Babylonian exile experience might be, maybe right now you, your 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 exile is is your illness. Or your exile is, the, is that you find out you, you lost your job. Your exile, maybe your, your marriage is falling apart. Or your, your kids are lost. Your exile may be some emotional trauma that you've experienced, some pain from the past that you, that's resurfacing and you just can't figure out how to deal with it. I mean, your, your, your exile, your Babylon may be... It's, it's whatever it is for you. But the truth remains that even in your experience where you are right now, and I think about, you know, your exile, a lot of people have relocated, right? Left the home they grew up in for years and years and years and moved here to be close to family. That can be traumatic. But whatever it is, uh, the truth remains that God is still the same God, and God is still longing to do this new thing in your life. Can you perceive it? Can you perceive the new thing? Can you see the way that God is making for you in the wilderness? Can you see the stream that God has put forth in the desert for you to nourish you? Can you perceive it? It's the same, the same, uh, the same opportunity for each of us. And we want to be sure that we're not stuck so stuck thinking about how good what we've had has been that we can't receive the better thing. Or so hurt and so stuck in the pain of the past that we can't open ourselves up for healing and open ourselves up for the new thing that God wants to do. Or we don't want to settle for just being okay when God's got something great in store for us. There's another book that uh, Jim Collins wrote. It said, good, good is the enemy of great. Right? We don't want to settle for just good worship and, and good family and, and good work and, and good, good, uh, tr good everything. We want to receive what is great. Now, how do I get, how do I get out of the past? How do, I, how do I get, if I'm stuck there, how do, I, how do I get unstuck and move into the future that God has prepared for me? Great question, right? How do we do it? Well, if we go back to the time traveling DeLorean, the what happened is the time traveling DeLorean needed power. It needed whole, a whole lot of power for Marty McFly to be able to travel back to the future. He needed power. Specifically, he needed 1.21 gigawatts. He, needed, he really needed plutonium and a nuclear reaction to, to power this time machine so that he could get back to the future. And he didn't have that power, but they, they, the mad scientist uh, and, and Marty figured out a way. and They got the power they needed and, and they traveled back into, into the future. So we're going to need power to get unstuck. So that we can move into the future as well. I, I, the, the, cold, the cold hard truth is I, most of us, if not all of us, we don't have it in us. On our own to be able to move out of the, the hurtfulness of the past. It's tough when you've been wounded. Especially if you've been carrying that wound around for your whole life. It's, we don't have that kind of power. And if we've been holding on to the glory days. Of, yes, I was the... I was the the captain of the football team I was in high school, I was the, the star player, the star quarterback. I had always had the prettiest girlfriend. And you know, I was a, and I had a 4.0 average, right? 
I am talking about myself. By the way. No, I'm just kidding. That's not me. If it can be hard to 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 move out of our pridefulness, right? And it can be hard to overcome whatever insecurity is really driving that inability to let go of what we, all the great things we've done, so that we could experience something better, right? So I, where do I get that power? Fully that power. The only source of power great enough to move, propel us into the future is the resurrection power of God that we see and can experience in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's the only power sufficient to, to move you and I into the, into the future God has prepared for us. St. Paul says in uh, Philippians 3, chapter 3, verse 10, it's a great verse, maybe when you want to make a note of, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I want that kind of power. And Paul goes on to say, I pray that you begin, that you begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. It's the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor and God's right hand. Resurrection power. When we look at that word power, it's, it comes from the same word, literal, literally means dynamite. It's dynamite power. It's explosive power. It's knock down the mountains kind of power. It's, it's, it's build a tunnel power. You know, think about the things that dynamite power. This is not just some wimpy five hour energy power. Right, this is dynamite power that can, can change our lives and break us free from whatever's holding us into the past and make, break, set us free from guilt, set us free from the sin, the shame, the unforgiveness, the resentment, all those things that tie us to the past. This resurrection power, this dynamite power can bust those chains loose once and for all. This is dynamite power that whatever we're facing whatever obstacle whatever challenge however insurmountable it might feel this dynamite resurrection power can blow a hole through that challenge so we can walk on through and part those to seas just like God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites this is dynamite power and this is the only power that's going to set us really free to to, to move into the future that God has prepared for us. And this power is available to all of us. And I'm inviting you today to, to stop trying to do it yourself. Stop feeling defeated. Stop feeling helpless. Stop feeling like you could do everything on your own. And grab hold of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us again that if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Today I invite you into Christ to believe in Him, to trust Him, to align your life to Him, to commit to follow Him, to commit to live for Him, to commit to be like Him. That is what it means to, to enter into Christ. And today, as we can celebrate Holy Communion, we've got a wonderful opportunity where we can receive Christ. And with Christ, the resurrection power. So God can do that new thing. And we can experience new peace, new joy, new life, new healing, new freedom, new strength, new growth, new wisdom, new understanding, new relationships. The new thing, we can perceive it, and we can receive it today. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day and this chance to for us to reflect on who you are, the greatness of who you are, the invitation you have to our, for us to step into the future. Help us in this time as we prepare to come to receive Holy Communion. Let it be an opportunity for us to step out of the past. Step out of the past and take a step into the future you have prepare for us. Give us faith. Um, increase our faith, God, so that none of us will be left standing in the past. 
but we'll all together come into the future that you have prepared for us. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.